Welcome back to the Lucky Nation Station where we keep shit lit all day, every day, y'all, man. Let's go ahead and tap into this original gangsta, gangsta movie. Um, y'all know I started my YouTube channel doing these videos. Then I stopped, started, started this YouTube channel doing these type of videos. But I want to get back to it. Um, yeah, what happened to original gangsta? Hood cinema. And the crazy thing is, I just watched this video probably about... Four weeks ago. Uh, yeah. It was very entertaining. Like, y'all know. When you get older, you want to watch movies that you used to watch when you was younger. And then you start knowing more about them. Or you, uh, you're like, man, what's so good about this movie? And shit that you didn't notice and didn't understand or get. Y'all know how that goes. Y'all yeah? want to watch your childhood movies. So, yeah, this is one of them old movies. What, from 96? <laughs> we in 2020. Four? Almost 2025. But yeah, let's get into it. Hold on, wait a minute. This episode of Princess. And please don't comment. He's doing a reaction to a reaction video. <laughs> In the 50s, the community was supported by the U.S. steel mill. Their savings went, unemployment ran out, and slowly the former steel workers lost the last two things they had left, their pride and their hope. They're all having a 90s hood basketball game. There's a bunch of gangsters out here, and they all got money on the game. This fake ass looking basketball game. This shit not convincing, bro. Little ass basketball courts. Everybody huddled in this young ass corner and shit for some reason. These niggas can barely move out here. Why the hell wouldn't you play on a regular size court if the stakes are so high? Oh, you Shut up! Niggas on goddamn wing ass and knock your ass out! So this kid's name is Kenny and he's really good at basketball. He got a scholarship and everything. He's a real nice kid and he got a promising future. He about to die soon. You know that. What's this, your first hood movie, bro? Yeah, give the man his due. Thanks, man. You gonna take care of that punk hustler, right? Yeah, you know it. Now, if you do bullshitting, we got a lot of real business to take care of. I wonder if he gonna say anything about the rapper Drew Down. Y'all know I'm from the Bay, so. And y'all know Drew Down is from Oakland. Uh, if y'all guys don't know, y'all not familiar with the rapper Drew Down, go ahead and search him up. D R U Down D O W N <laughs> Drew Down. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, y'all check that out. Don't let me have to thrash you about the head naked. <laughs> no! <laughs> After hustling all the gangsters at basketball. Oh, uh, Kenny goes to lunch with his homeboy, teenage baby Godfrey. Oh, hell no. Nah. Look at this nigga, man. This little ass forehead, boy. Nigga got a one head. This tiny ass usher um, head ass boy. Sam bad for the hustle, I'm on. But you didn't tell him you got a basketball scholarship to UCLA, did you? All that money, I bet you were dunking on him like Jordan. Kind of the thing when I was looking up, when I seen that, like, is that Godfrey? Y'all know Godfrey more popular now. Doing them interviews and his podcasts and... Yeah, and he's a comedian, but back then, I don't think he was as popular as he is now. Did you stick your tongue out? Yeah. You know why I'm so good, though? No, Kenny, tell us, why are you so good? Well, it's genetics, Marcus. Godfrey is definitely a great comedian most of the time. He don't say nothing funny, though, the whole movie. You know who is super funny, though? The nigga behind him. This nigga is being so extra. No pun intended. He just because he's not an actor. He's a rapper, and he's from also from the Loonies. Y'all know uh, with Drew Down, Yuck Mouth, and uh, what's his name, Numb School. I think that's I think that's I think that's Numb School. From uh, if y'all not familiar with the Loonies, y'all know that song. I got five on it. Biatch. Yeah, you know. Bayer, yeah, 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 yeah. This 
having a good ass time. It's really entertaining to me. I love this nigga. Like, what are you eating, bro? Slow down. Is it good, bro? Anyway, after lunch, Kenny goes outside to make a phone call, but the gangsters from earlier spin the block and they shoot him up in the phone booth. Sad hood movie death scene. This shit not convincing either. This nigga kind of a bad actor, bro. I didn't see the gunman, but I did get the license number of the car. Detective Waits on that 2829, the blue cougar, the broken right taillight, ain't been doing that yet. The police come and investigate now. The owner of the store gives them the license plate number of the car, and the leader of the rebels ends up finding out. That's the name of their gang, by the way. The Rebels. It's hella generic, right? So come on, bro. The old man from the grocery store, he gave y'all up. That Mr. Bookman. Thought you wanna know. It's my favorite fucking store. <laughs> Listen up, people. The system is made to keep y'all struggling. But you never heard what I'm about to share, because every time I post this, it gets deleted. It's so goddamn dumb. It's this old punk shit I'm hearing you didn't talk to the police about. I just told him where that boy's mother lived. He's lying. He gave us up. Say you fucking sorry, man. Fucking customers always right. Fucking thing. That bullshit over there, and you just pop his old ass. I'm God. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> It turns out the store owner's son is this fake ass black dynamite and he comes to town to get his revenge. He's an ex NFL player and apparently he's, he's one of the founding shit. members of the Rebels. So close! We run this motherfucker now. You better get out of here before you get Fucking playing with me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? These motherfuckers shot the store owner and they just own the store now? Like, when does that ever happen? Come on, bro. Where are you getting that from? These <laughs> niggas stole the entire store. All the fight scenes in this movie are so goddamn funny, by the way. The sound effects, the sluggishness is comedy gold all around. <laughs> If you couldn't already tell, this is definitely a black exploitation style movie. Like they don't already know that? Are you saying that they're stupid? The overacting, the cheesy dialogue, the minuscule, tiny budget, goofy ass action scenes, it's got all that. But it's also got those 90s hood movie elements mixed in there too. It's like Shaft time traveled to the 90s to beat up Loke Dog, basically. Shaft versus Loke Dog. It's a boomer power fantasy at the end of the day. You got the old people beating up all the young people, teaching them a lesson or something. Pull your pants up, young people. Yeah, well, I remember when it used to be about getting out. They don't wanna get out. There's no place for them to go. They don't cry. They don't mourn. They just kill each other. I, but that's the destiny of young people here. Braxton from the Jamie Foxx show is the main bad guy. I waited long enough to talk about this now. This shit is not convincing either. I feel like I keep saying that. But he's really not selling this performance at all. You're not a good gangbanger, Braxton. This is like a Marvel MCU type gangbanger. This feels like an old white man's rendition of a cool 90s gangster. Oh no, wait a minute. Of course, this was directed by a white dude. Was this your first hood movie, bro? Larry Cohen is his name. Now, to be fair to him, he actually does this shit. He's got a few of these black exploitation movies on his resume, including Black Caesar back in the 70s, which also starred Fred Williamson. He directed the movie Phone Booth. I actually fuck with Phone Booth a lot. Remember Phone Booth? Forrest Whitaker? He's old ass niggas. Honestly, shout out to Larry Cohen. All those 70s black exploitation movies may be super cheesy now. They were cheesy back then too, but that era specifically helped pave the way for so many black entertainers, black all-stars. They trick me and I don't care anymore. This market is confiscated property. It's ours now. And you know, when I was a kid, I would come in here and your father would give me a fresh slice of bologna. I really liked it there. Bologna? We'll see you later, star. When you're a big baller and a shot caller, <laughs> one schedule can get a bit tight. So yeah, Black Dynamite teams up uh, with Kenny. Where he stuck as that character, Braxton. Oh, oh. His mom, she's played by another black exploitation oh. all-star, Pam Greer. They go through the hood getting revenge and making all the kids pull up their pants. Pull your pants up. Watch 
watching this make me want to go watch the movie Coffee with Pam Grier. Young people. Strong. <laughs> at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning at the Christmas Chapel, Spyro got something on at noon for you, baby. For sure. Oh my God. <laughs> Realistically, these old ass niggas would have got folded in the first scene. He's a regular ass old man. Like, why is he so good at? He said he, said he would have got folded in the first scene. Folded like a laptop. Hand to hand combat. He was in the NFL at one point. So what? You're not winning any of these fights in real life, sir. <laughs> His old ass homeboy comes to help him out during the barbershop fight. He's a retired boxer and he recently just got back to town also after hearing about Kenny. You know, John, these kids are not like us, man. They don't want to work, man. All they want is money. No, man, I came back to Barry Kane. Laurie's son? Our son. Well, you know, I never knew him, Johnny. Yeah, man, she made it clear that she wanted a baby but wanted no part of me. Bruh, this deadbeat ass nigga complaining about kids these days. Nigga, what about your ass these days? The nerve of this motherfucker. That's crazy. Pull your pants up, sir. Back in the day, we were a gang, a protection gang. Remember that? Now it's all about drive-by shootings and all that kind of shit. Nothing. It isn't about rocks and bottles anymore. It's about automatic weapons. Oh, wow. I was joking when I called it Shaft Time Travels to the 90s. This, the actual Shaft is in the movie now. He plays a character named Slick and he's complaining about all the stupid ass young people. The amount of mustache in this movie is blowing me away. There's so much mustache. Literally every character has a big ass mustache. Anyway, Fred Williamson sets up this meeting with the Rebels to see if they can make peace. His homeboy Jake gets mad and he says he just wants revenge or something. Now they're not friends no more. Sad old niggas. Got a meeting with the rebel. What for? Set up a truce, start some kind of dialogue. Oh man, you must be out of your mind. I know what I have to do. Oh, Jake, man, come on. Hey, Jake! Jake, man, come back. Jake! 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 I need my money! They're at the meeting now with the rebels. It's going terribly. You probably guessed that. These animals killed her son in front of our store. How that? You don't know nothing about that shit, bitch. The rebels say that if the store owner oh, keeps no. quiet, one more time, I gotta run it back to the light. Hold up, you don't know nothing about that shit, bitch. Hold up, you don't know nothing about that shit, bitch. The rebels say that if the store owner keeps quiet about who shot him, they'll stop harassing the family. Wheezy Jefferson is not going for that shit at all, though. <laughs> and I want the boy who shot my husband to confess, and maybe. Just maybe we'll let you survive. You the old people come up with the plan to turn all the local gangs against each other. It's the Rebels and the Rangers and the Diablos. What kind of gang names are these, bruh? It sounds like some esports niggas making up guild names. It's so childish. I mean, being in a gang is low key childish. So, with whatever. Red is the El Diablo. The revs are gray and the yellow is the Rangers territory. We gotta figure out a way to pit all three gangs against each other. Break the truce. That snitching ass little kid from earlier is spying on the old people. They end up recruiting this little nigga for their plan though. They use him to buy a bunch of guns. Then they steal one of the rebels' cars and stage a drive by on the Diablos. Yeah, well, why don't you come help us be more fair? I might be interested for a price. So? I bought a taste of everything. Are the Rebs uh, having a war or something? Classified information essay. Yeah, where you going? Seattle. That's where Rain wants to go. He was my brother. He was a banger. He got killed. Hey, cool, little man. Uh, 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 go, go, go!
Bro, what the hell even caused this big ass explosion? Y'all just killed most of those people, by the way. I mean, I gotta admit, it looked pretty cool. I really liked it there. Just to reconfirm also, this nigga left his son in the hood, never attempted to meet his son. Then he comes back doing drive-bys and karate fighting everybody. You a hypocrite, bro. What makes you any better than the gang members at this point? He act like he's saving the hood or some shit. The hood needs dads way more than they need old karate niggas, sir. You're not helping. Their plan works out though, and the Diablos think the rebels trying to start a gang war. That leads to a bunch more drive-bys and violence all around the hood. Good job, fellas. Matter of fact, won't you ask the booklet while I'm doing- And the thing I noticed about this, I don't think he gonna point it out, but they actually, in this, for some reason, they took the, the a whole scene out of a whole nother movie and put it in their movie. Like, from Colors, the movie Colors. Like, that, that scene right there came from the movie Colors and they threw it in this movie. I'm pretty sure they stole like another scene from another movie. It's all around the hood. Good job, fellas. Matter of fact, but then it goes, it transfer over. Violence all around the hood. That part right here is from Colors, the movie Colors. Good job, fellas. <laughs> Matter of fact, won't you ask the bookman while I'm doing this? Drive by on the church. Y'all guys want to go do your research? Go when y'all watch that movie. Go back and watch that part. Yeah, bookman. I mean, it ain't cool like that, man. Hey, hey, hey. Fuck the book, Miss Knight. Get up out of here. They stole that part from uh that part from color. Part was well they threw it in there. Then this part back from color. Like that part, that's when it's it's the part. Like that part, man, I can't even get it. This part right here is when they shot the, the Mexicans house up on colors. And the other part was when they did the drop out of church, like they just threw that. <laughs> Spyro, the leader of the gang, name is fucking Spyro. Come on, bruh. Spyro's trying to buy some heats to get ready for the gang war, but the gun plug is fresh out. I'm not the fucking Pentagon, okay? The chip man I sold you the other day, that was it. Ooh. There is no more. Some old man and, and this kid. He... Oh, man. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I know who hit the Diablo. We've always cared for us. Say, man, what is this coming to, though? This is what this is coming to. Oh, my God. Anyone with $10,000 or more in credit card debt or personal loans may qualify for help from National Debt Relief. Minimum payments could literally keep... The little kid from Earl... What this is coming to. Oh, my God. The little kid from earlier gets killed for betraying the gang. Oh, man, I didn't see that coming. I really thought he was fucking gonna go to Seattle and retire. You tricked me, movie. So in the climax, the rebels start burning down whole city blocks. They're going crazy now, trying to get revenge on the old niggas. Really glad you got involved, old niggas. Look how much you helped. The movie doesn't even acknowledge the irony of this whole situation. They're causing violence and chaos, trying to get retaliation for their homie. Like, that's exactly... Whatever, man, you got it. The rebels used the pastor to set up an ambush type plan for the old people. The old people were already prepared for that. They planted some fake guns around or something and now it's a showdown in the streets between all the old people and the young people. They hitting the gang members with brooms and shit. It's insanely funny. Of course, this is the climax. This is what the whole movie looks like to me. <laughs> Much ain't talk to your family about me yet, huh? I'm the one to off your punk ass, son. Huh? <laughs> Watch it again, cause I just realized I fell asleep on this goddamn movie. Cause this ending part, I fell asleep by the time the fire stuff started happening and that little boy got killed. So all this part, I didn't even really see. I seen it a long time ago, but I ain't seen it recently. <laughs> You kill my son, motherfucker! I will have you know that I have a yellow belt in Hop Cheeto. They have this phony ass fight scene back at the Rebels hideout. It's pretty bad. That one drive-by scene was legit the only good action scene in the whole movie. Spyro's gotta fight Kenny's dad and he finally makes it a point to call this nigga a deadbeat. I'm glad somebody finally did it. 
You didn't even know him, man. You see, I'm your son. See, you made me what I am, huh? Hey, tell us something, man. You gotta believe me. Just because Damien is dead doesn't mean you can move in. I'm back home, blood. And I'm working with him. Well, there goes the neighborhood. Bro, I don't think you did it yet, but your next movie you gotta do is Original Gangsters. Nigga, they got Braxton in there being a gangster. My nigga Braxton from the Jamie Foxx show, this nigga is so unfucking leaveable as a fucking gangster. Nigga, it's even a part in here. Official viewing though. I like it. We from You know, I had a pretty good time with original gangsters. I remember bits and pieces of this movie from when I was younger. This is my first official viewing though. I like it. It's one of the cheesiest hood movies to come out of the 90s, but it's on purpose, I'm pretty sure. This movie is like a love letter to all those iconic 70s black exploitation films. It's got Richard Roundtree, Fred Williamson, Pam Greer, and Jim Brown. Wheezy Jefferson in here somewhere? Shout out to Drew Down also. He's a Bay Area rapper from the 90s. This was his first movie role. He should have been the main bad guy, honestly. He's way better at the shit than Braxton. Way more believable. He's a- Yeah, I thought he wasn't gonna say nothing, but yeah, he, Drew Down. I, you know, I like his music, shit. Yeah. Hey, and he represents for the Bay, man. Hold the best character in the movie. He steals pretty much every scene he's in. He's funny, he's intimidating when he needs to be. Definitely enjoy this performance. Shout out Drew Down. This movie is a weird ass boomer power fantasy again, like I said, but it's entertaining. I was never bored the whole time, so that's always good. Check it out when you get some time. It's on Tubi right now for free. I give it a seven out of 10 or whatever. I've literally never rated any of these movies before. Why the fuck did I just randomly rate this one? Don't listen to me, bro. That's it though. Be sure to like the video, especially if you made it this far shout out to all the patreon homies they make but um yeah guys man i'll catch y'all in the next one man uh i hope y'all guys enjoyed this video man we're gonna keep them coming we're gonna keep this shit lit uh yeah man we're just gonna keep it going man keep this shit lit like every day man y'all gotta holler shout out to the whole dot damn lucky nation and we here to stay man i'm gonna keep on posting and keep on posting and keep on flooding this shit and um, y'all need to get something with the background. Yeah, we 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 working on it, y'all. But anyways, guys, I'll let y'all next one. Let's get it. Yeah, 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 yeah.